of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Robert Hooks, Janet McLaughlin, Joe Santos, Joe Maross, Stephen Keats, Rafael Campos. Tonight's episode, Rampage. I don't know. 
but he sure is dead. Murphy, fight? No, nah, they found a new way of making love. How you doing, Mike? Okay. Body's back here. Who was he? No ID. Doesn't anybody know him? And this beef? Are you kidding? <laughs> Nobody knows nothing around here, right, Mike? Yeah, all deaf and all blind, huh? See this washroom? What is it? Three by five tops? Six guys all say they were in there at the same time. Hey, Roy, give me the shiv. Now, we found this over there in the corner. Looks like it did the job. Get this in the lab. Dick, uh, give me a report as soon as you can, will you? Let's have them all in for questioning. You got it, Mike. All right, now, let's try it again. The man that was killed, did he come into the bar alone or what? I don't know. Uh -huh. How many times have you been in Ritz of A couple, I guess. I say five. And then when the, uh, this bottle went flying, the lights went out. And you didn't see anything after that? Nothing, man. Like I told you, I went right underneath the table. Well, violence gives me indigestion. You know that, Merle? Merle, you're just beautiful. The man's knifed, the bars are total right off, and you're telling me it's still a fight. Look, look I say it. I got flat right off. I didn't have a chance to do... You didn't see anything, right? Right. Okay, what about the dead man now? Was he a regular? Mm -hmm. Steve! Well, just hang tight, all right? Do you know Perez from Narcotics? Sure, how you doing, Frank? How are you, Ball? His name was Ellis. He was working with us. Is he the former? Yes. If we picked him up for a holder, I could see he wasn't a bad kid, and so we worked something out, you know? Did you know he was at the Parkside tonight? He told me today that he thought he could score there, and that he would check it out. He did, huh? Bring him in here. You don't mind if I hang in? What, you're an old friend of yours? Yeah, for the last couple of years. One of the reasons why our whole neighborhood went down. Yeah. Come here. Yes. Sit down. I guess uh, trouble's nothing new to you, Amaro. I run a clean place. He never proved otherwise. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to prove now. The illegal sale of drugs at the Parkside. Big trouble, Amaro. Now, wait a minute. Perez, you're telling me you got nothing on me. What do they want? Protection money? Somebody trying to muscle you? I told you I don't know anything. When did you find out that Ellis was feeding information to the narcotics squad? Well, Ellis? Who's Ellis? Lights out, a lot of noise. Good time to take a guy out, Merle. Now, hold on a minute here. Well, now, you better come across with something. Otherwise, I'm going to have to say you're it. Perez. This is murder, Merle. Not my department, you know? <laughs> okay. But first off, I want to say, and this is the truth, so help me God. I did not kill the man. Who did? I don't know. Those boys, they bust through the door. Now, I threw a bottle, but they flattened me out. And the first thing I knew about anybody being dead was uh, after they left. Who were those old boys? The only one I recognize is a cat named Joplin. Joplin? That's right, Joe Joplin. How many were there? Three. That makes four altogether. That's right. Now, wait a minute. How do you know Joe Joplin? I've seen him around. I thought they wore masks. <laughs> look, I'm telling you it was him, I'm sure. Yeah? That's right. What does he look like? <laughs> now, they all look alike to me. <laughs> oh, I see. Now, is that your way of telling me that he's black, Merle? Come on, now, who else does a thing like that, right? I mean, no reason. No reason, huh? Well, I don't buy it, Merle. A guy you just seen around walks with a whole bunch of other guys and tears your place apart, and you say no reason? Now, that's the way it happened. Now, listen, Merle. Something's going down on you, right? And you being a bigot isn't enough to bend you. Wait a minute. Steve, hold it. Now, wait a minute. Listen, uh, I think Frank has a couple of questions he wants to ask him. Take him with you. Sure. 
let's go. What got you so hot? We were just following a lead. It's not Joe Joplin. You know him? Think so, yeah. Somebody you booked before? No. Somebody I went to school with at Berkeley. Last I heard, he was living in that neighborhood. But it doesn't jive, Mike. I mean, Joe's a hard nose, but he's not a killer. No, last And time. he's not into hard drugs. How long ago was that? It's got to be uh, two. No, no, wait a minute. It's got to be three years. Well, then maybe it's time you gave him another visit, right? Like maybe first thing tomorrow morning? Okay. See you later. Man. Hey, come on in here. What are you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Long time. How are you doing? All right, all right. Wow, come on up and meet the wife. You got married? Yeah. Hey, remember Forshaw? Forshaw. Was he that dude who was always looking for a rich widow 20 years old? <laughs> right, oh, right. Man. I still see him every once in a while. Too, huh? He's got some scam going down in San Jose. Uh, virgin oil <laughs> stops the hair loss or some crazy that looks stuff just like that. Beautiful. Hey, let me right here. Oh, thank you. Come on. Well, if you like milk instead of cream, we're in business. Why? Is uh, somebody on a diet? Well, you know, this year it's cholesterol, next year, who knows? Maybe it's corpuscles. Yeah. Oh, Joe, don't tread on me, Joplin. I mean, isn't this a picture, man? All you need's a dog. Perfect suburban American, I tell you. Oh, look who's talking about going straight. Keller the cop. <laughs> when did all this happen, man? Uh, a few years ago. <laughs> so what prompted this class reunion, after all this time? Well, Joe's name came up, and it seemed a good time to see what's happening. Joe's name? How? Where? Uh, there's some trouble up on uh, King's Road, a bar called the uh, Parkside. And, wait a minute, is that right in here? Two blocks. Right, right. Anyway, we got a call on it, and, uh, well, you know, a witness said maybe you could help us out. Well, who told you that? <laughs> Sounds like you don't think too much of the idea. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, man. Hey, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Hey, dig it, Steve. What? Remember this? I mean, hey, Steve, like, pull my coat to what's going down, baby. Remember? Is that, wait, 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 that, uh... Uh, that guy in Oakland, that gas station, uh, uh, Ben Hill, Bernie, Bernie. Bad Bernie, right. Bad Bernie, I remember, yeah. So, uh, what about the Parkside? Well, I thought you'd give me a line on it, that's all. I pass it. Were you around there last night? No. Would you mind telling me where you were last night? <laughs> hey, you're getting pretty good at this cop thing, aren't you? I've been practicing, Joe, I've been practicing. Can I tell him? I was, uh, in my friend's bedroom last night. <sighs> there goes my virtue. Oh, no, that's long gone, baby. Long gone. <laughs> so do you buy it? <sighs> Mike, he doesn't know the guy from the bar. He's never even been in the place, and he was home with his wife last night. I mean, what's not to buy? So he's in construction now, eh? Carpenter, yeah. You know, he's always been good with his hands. What about teaching? Did he give up on that? Wait a minute. Did I ever tell you he'd been a teacher? No, you didn't. I did a little checking on my own. Did you know he had a file? One to ten in Mississippi on an assault charge. Sure, I know it. I was there. We went down on one of those freedom rides together. Oh, he was with you on that? Remember I told you about that friend of mine that got worked over by the deputies? Yeah. That was Joe. See, the drill was you go limp and double up, right? So I take 14 stitches, and Joe takes a swing. That was his assault charge, and that's why he's not teaching today. The question on the state application, you ever been arrested? Well, you can still take it to the commission. Yeah, but I think the whole thing sort of knocked the wind out of Joe about being involved. Funny. Just the opposite happened to you. You get thumped, and you started to think about becoming a cop, helping to breathe. Oh, what are you talking about? No, it's true. Now, I never said that. You didn't have to. I saw it on your face the first time I met you. <laughs> You know, that's the only reason I took you on. I had to see if there could be anybody as good as I am. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, what do you want? Joe's clean. Okay. Let's go and talk to Perez, see what he's got on the other guys. Yeah. 
Here we are. All of these photos were taken in the neighborhood. We really had our hands full there lately. Dopers, hookers, pornos, you name it. Must have made a hundred busts down there in the last couple of months, but it's all uphill. I remember him. What's his name? Uh, Floyd Stahl Becker. The other one is a bent kid called Turbin. Any convictions on Stahl Becker? He's been clean every time we pop him. I mean, he's dealing. There is no two ways about that. But he's like slick, you know? It's like a revolving door in and out every couple of months. It's supposed to be in pretty tight with the heavies. I thought they didn't let users get close. Uh, you figure them. My guess is that they get some kind of a kick on kind of them do anything they tell them. I mean, anything he is weird, twisted. You know any of these? Oh, yes. Richie Toledo. He is the bottom of the barrel. Works the school neighborhoods. I should get rid of that picture. What about the other guy? I don't know him. The guy that got in the picture. Maybe he's asking the price. Maybe he's giving the time. Maybe he was giving us the time this morning. You know him? I used to. There's a neighbor next door, the guy from the little car, the guy that's walking in now. Counting Joe, that makes four, right? Right. Great way to spend a weekend, spying on an old friend. I told you, you didn't have to pull this duty. No, I know, you told me something else once, too. About not letting old times get in the way of what's happening at the moment. That's right. Gotta tell you, though, I never felt this old before. There's Perez. Come on, let's go downtown and check out the guys who own those cars. Listen, uh... Do you mind if I stayed on, Joe? I thought it was getting to you. Yeah, but one way or the other, I'd like to be the first to know. <laughs> okay, but when he goes, don't get too close. Remember, he knows you as well as you know him. She may be hardly at all. So, okay, the cops get your name and they ask a few questions. Take it easy, they got nothing on you. Charlie's right, Joe. They didn't do anything. Of course I'm right. Besides, what are they getting so excited about? One dead junkie? What did they ever do about my kid? On his way to school, he gets turned into a drug addict. Right. What about our wives? My wife has been hassled twice. It ain't gonna be no more than that. Yeah, over on the boulevard every day with the pushers, the muggers, the pimps, you name it. How come the cops haven't done anything about that? I don't know why, man. I mean, I wish I did know why. Look, we did something. I mean, we tried. And that's it. No more. No, 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 not me. I'm gonna finish what we started. I'm gonna throw those creeps out of here. Charlie, a man is dead. Don't talk to me! What about it? What'd he say? I'm still in it. For my kids, Jill. I mean, I'd never forgive myself if I thought... I didn't do everything I could to clean things up around here. The way I see it, it's us or them, Joe. I finally get cleared for a bulk purchase, and my distributor thinks he's still selling nickel bags. Hey, I'm telling you, I know else. They turned him. That body he wanted was a setup. So you killed him? That was smart, Floyd. Real smart. Hey, nobody knows what happened. I can tell you what your dealers will think happened. They're gonna hear about those crazies with the clubs coming down on Merle's place like that. They're gonna hear about somebody getting killed. And they're not gonna want any part of you. Ah, come on, relax, eh? Relax? How? Look, I brought you in because you said you could handle a big distribution. 
Now, what happens when the shipment comes in Tuesday and you can't find any dealers? Oh, come on. Who says I can't find oh, any? You won't. Not with those crazies around. Who's going to take a chance? Look, did I say I'll handle it? I'll handle it. All I know is, if it was Marioni's territory or uh, Sheldon Meltzer's, they don't think like shoe clerks. And they wouldn't stand for interference from some crazy people. Hey, Wolfburton, come on. Look, these, these uh, wackos, a bunch of freaks, right? Merle can finger this guy who's in charge. I'll just pay him a little visit and uh, straighten it out. Is that what you want? It's not what I want, Lloyd. It's your decision. Whatever you think is necessary to move the goods. <laughs> Almost 20 minutes. Maybe I should go back in. Not yet, no. All right, boys. Back at the benches. The voice is here. Frank's going. I stay. Stone says you too. You say why? Yeah, he's got some name to go with those faces you saw at Joplin. So we'll see if they ring any bells. Chop, chop. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, really incredible. My father never made as much in a whole week as we just spent in a half hour in there. And he had six miles to feed. That's why I wanted you to come with me, so you could see for yourself. Yeah, well, the next time you can spare me the misery. Is it better than us? Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. Oh, come on, baby. Don't hand me that. You know the situation. I make what I make, and that's all we can spend. Now, if I'm holding you back and you think you can do better, then go, baby, because I'm not going to be the bad guy, okay? Watch her. Well, where are you going? I have to buy something at the drugstore, and I want to pick up my dress from the cleaners. But I'll bring you all the receipts. All right, I'll take this stuff home. I'll meet you back at the cleaners. Come on. <laughs> All those bananas, you little monkey. Your husband is not feeling too well, and he's on back, and... What do you mean? Yes, where is he? Hey, 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 wait a minute. Take it easy. It's all right. Where is he? Oh, he's in back of the store over there. Yeah. I don't know. He just looked kind of sick, you know, and he asked me to call you. But uh, I'm back there. Oh, I will just use your back door, okay? Thanks. It's not in the back, lady, in the car. Where's my daughter? Oh, I don't know, lady. This man got sick, asked me to call you. Yeah. It's back here. Yeah, come in here. Oh, in there. Yeah, let's. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, all right? <laughs> what do you think, Steve? Job. 
Joplin ever mention any of those guys? No. Frank, any of those names familiar to you? Not off the top. You run them past R&I? Mm -hmm. Not a record between them. You know, that looks more like a Wednesday night bowling team or something. I mean, maybe Merle was stringing us out. He could have gotten Joe's name from anywhere. Yeah, maybe. And maybe that guy just pulled the number out of a hat when he mentioned four guys, huh? And maybe that picture of Joplin next to the pusher was just a fluke. Mm -mm. We may not know what game they're playing yet, but I'll bet you that those boys are in the lineup. <laughs> Let me go. Let you go? Sure. We'll let you go, Mama. This time. Would you listen to me? You tell your husband to stop sticking his nose in. Another deal like that one at the park side. Huh. Maybe you don't go home then. Murphy throwing another party? Well, I didn't expect you to get an invitation this time, Mike. Everybody got out alive. Well, it sounded like the same bunch you had the last time. I still want to talk to him. Yeah, well, this one's not much of a talker. Won't even give me his name. Well, maybe we can do that. What do you say, Steve? Isn't this the guy with the uh, pickup and the camper? That's right, Charlie Casella. I can't, Joe. I can't. Of course you can. You were standing next to one of them. Now, how tall was he? Oh, Joe, please, let's leave. We don't need this house. Where are we going to go, huh? It's going to be the same any place we go. Oh, there must be somewhere. Now, that's what we said when we got this place. It was going to be better here. Well, it's not. Oh, it looks nice. Trees on the streets. Trees and junkies. Look, when she's 15 years old and walking around here, Corby, we found out that moving isn't the answer. Well, neither is what you're doing. Come here, you listen to me. How tall was he? Joe. Was he as tall as I am? No. What was he wearing? I don't know. A, a, a jacket. What color? Well, it was dark. Blue. What was his hair like? Long, short, dark, light? I, I think it was dark, but he had a scarf tied on his head. Who'll pay you, Charlie? Nobody. In other words, you just bust up places for the fun of it. Is that the idea? No. Okay, let's get back to the park side. That was the whole idea just to get Alice. Alice? Well, how'd you find out he was feeding us information, Charlie? We didn't know anything about that. We were there. But we didn't touch him. We didn't touch him. Honest. We didn't touch him. Who was we, Charlie? I don't know. Nobody. Nobody knifed him? I, I don't know anything about that. One more time, Charlie. How many of you are there? I don't know. Now, how do you like that for loyalty, huh? Did you look under his tongue? I bet he's got a cyanide pill under there just in case we start pulling his fingernails out. Do you think that 
Joe Joplin would do the same for you if he were seated in that chair that you're sitting in right now. Or your other buddies, Ted and, uh, what's that other guy's, um, Leo? Well, what did you look so surprised for? We know that you all went to Joe Joplin's house this morning. We know all about that vigilante thing. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. You'd better give us credit for something. Now, which one of you put that knife in, Alice? No, no, you, you got it all wrong. We were just trying to clean up the neighborhood. See, we did it for our families. My kid. My son. I got him hooked. Fifteen years old. And I did that to him. Charlie, Charlie, why don't you give a full statement to Frank? Would you like some, uh, some of my coffee? Hey, where did that come from? Well, I just took a shot. Well, that was some shot. Well, I figured it wouldn't be the first time a couple of guys felt they could do a better job than we can. Yeah, they try it out on some of their friends over a couple of bottles of beer, get themselves all riled up, and before you know it, you got yourself a bunch of vigilantes on a rampage. Yeah, it's just hard for me to figure a guy like Joe getting that far out of line, though. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah. Well, listen. I can remember when I was a kid. My old man, 86, the neighborhood drunk off the block. He did. He had just had it with drunks hanging around his wife and kids. It was a stupid thing to do, but he did it. Now, this is my old man I'm talking about. Yeah, now it's hard drugs. That's right, drugs. Yeah, I can understand why Joplin's doing what he's doing. But we've got to make him understand that his way isn't the answer. Who's with him now, Harris? No, nobody. Frank built the team after we booked Casella. After? What about the four? Well, Harris said you only went out once. That was to pick up his wife, and he was home when they ripped up that nudie place. Come on, we better find out whether he's home now. Playing outraged citizen again? Tearing another joint apart? He's trying to protect me. He's risking his life for me because nobody else gives a damn. All we want is a place to live where we don't have to be afraid. Corby, listen, Corby, we care. But if you want us to help Joe, we have got to understand what's going on. All right. Before we bought this house, we had an apartment in the Haight. We were robbed twice there. The first time, the police said it was probably a drug addict. They said, oh, this happens all the time. And that was that. The second time, Joe was out of town on a job. I came home while the man was still there. He raped me. We moved here to get away from all those memories and all those people. How do you think Joe feels when he finds this neighborhood changing? When he sees people doing rotten things? Joe is a man. He had to do something. Did he kill somebody last night? No. He never killed anybody, but he might get himself killed now. What do you mean? He's out looking for a man who threatened me. Because of what Joe's been doing? Yes. Where is he now? I don't know. Somewhere on the boulevard. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
street as soon as you book them. And where do they end up? On my doorstep. No, that's not good enough, man. I mean, your way isn't working, Steve. So why don't we try working together? Oh, come off of it, man. You mean call City Hall? That's right. You call me, you call Mike, you call any of us. What do you think we're doing down here anyway? Not enough, man. Not enough. Now, look, Joe, just look. We make mistakes, all right? We're on every place we ought to be, but we are trying. Well, I got news for you, Steve. So am I. What do you mean? That you're entitled to special privileges? The victim's right to revenge? We know about your wife, what happened to her. Oh, no. You didn't make her go through that whole thing again. Nobody made her go through anything unless it was you. You took the law in your own hands. You made your family a target. That's right, Joe. You have no one to blame but yourself. Now, look, you don't have to tell us anything if you don't want to. But if you do, I promise you, it doesn't leave this room. Corby was afraid for you, so she told us. I mean, so what? What are we going to do? Despise you? Laugh at you? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we're holding our own, maybe not. God knows things aren't changing that much. But what's the alternative? I mean, are you really ready to turn everybody loose to do it your way? Give them a club? Tell them to work on anybody they decide isn't right? I mean, you're going to be a teacher, right? But you still teach your daughter. Is that what you want her to learn? No, man. Let's take a look. Is he one of the men that threatened you? Yes, he is. That's it. It's all over. Can I see Joe now, please? Right now. Aren't you right here? Tengo que ir al hospital. When the mental test is over. Estaba en la esquina parado haciendo nada. Listen, you kidnapped the woman in there, and she just identified you now. Kill her? No, man. We, we just took her for a ride in the car, that's all. Who did? You and who else? I don't know. A terrible man is me, huh? Floyd. Me and Floyd. But I swear to you, man, we didn't even touch her. Floyd Stahlbecker? Yeah, that's right. What was the idea? I need a doctor. You help us, we help you. You know that. Something about her old man, you know, getting him to lay off and stuff. I... What was going down, a buy? Yeah. Stahlbecker and who else? Come on now, whose money? I don't know. It's okay, man. When is it coming off, Terrell? Soon. At the pier. What pier? Come on, man! 41. Pier 41. Who found out that our boy was at the parkside? Was it you? Oh, no, man. No, no. That was Floyd. I mean... Guess that's why I knifed him. Yeah. Look him. We better cover that pier. I got right on it. Doctor? Hey, man, you got my word, you know?
We're coming to shore. One's got a package. Got him. Frank. Yeah, I got him. Frank, it's on. The shot. Let's see what you got. If they split up, we take Stahlbecker. Right. How's your uh, voyage in, huh? Well, you don't speak English, huh? How about it, Frank? Well, not yet, Mike. Okay. Bon voyage, buddy. <laughs> okay, Mike, it's all yours. No, no, not yet. Let them clear, please. <laughs> first thing we'll find him. Take the box. Or Brighton? Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Alright, hold it! Hold it! Gun the gun! 
to stay back. Don't the guy! All right. Get back. Down. Down. Down, bitch! It's uh, looking pretty good, huh? Yeah, as far as I can see. What about down to the corner? Can you see that far? Yeah. Cat sitting around on the bus stop? Except uh, that's his office. He's in business. Well, what kind of business is he in? He's a salesman. Pills. Any color, any kick. And what are you thinking of doing about it, Joe? Well, I'm just glad you came along, Lieutenant. Save me a dime. Inspectors, you might stand up for a second, please. Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Henry Silva, Joanne Harris. Episode, the Victims.
Ready? What's going on? Accident. Hey, hold this a minute, will you? Want to get a stick? Yeah. Anybody follows and he gets it. Roll it! some kind of mold. You in a mold, adventurous Nellie Bly? I don't believe it, no. No, no, no. Just a fashion page writer, boss. Oh, really? Why do men do that? I mean, why do they want to, you know, change me? Well, men are basically hunters, and some of them like to tame. Not you. No. No, I think molds are for cookies. Well, it can't be for me. I have no friends. Did you leave the number with someone? I had to. Oh, look at me. Oh, I wish I could. Hello. Steve, Mike, there's been a prison break. When? About an hour ago. They took a guard with them as hostage and threw him off the truck when they hit the great highway. He's in general hospital now, pretty bad. They got that highway blocked? Both ends, all exits. I think they should put up a roadblock in US 101 South, too. They might have. Yeah, I know what they might have done. You just get your tail over to the hospital. Okay. Half an hour, right? Bye bye. Half an hour? Prison break. Oh. Well, I'll take you. No, no, you don't have to. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid. I am much better navigator on land. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know something? What? I think they make rules for other things, too. Like what? Give me a minute. Nurse. Hi, my name is Mrs. Crowley. My husband was a guard that oh, was her. I'm sorry, Mrs. Crowley. There's no news yet. Crowley is one of our top men. He's been a guard at the prison for 14 years, but even top men get careless. Warden Hanson, my partner, Inspector Keller. Oh, Warden Hello. Inspector. These are the IDs and mug shots you wanted. Who is this? A mean one, Lee Wilson. Age 32, doing 1 to 14 on assault with intent to commit murder. 
John Phelan, alias Chicky, age 26, convicted of armed robbery and assault, doing 5 to 20. Well, that's his second offense. I nailed him once for burglary. And Ben Vargas, uh, age 41, embezzler, doing 1 to 10. Does he have any record of violence? Not until today. He's out of his class with those two. Well, maybe he just graduated. How many guns he got? Three shotguns and three pistols, all taken from the guards. Art, take this to communications. Teletyped all the units. You got any late news? Nope. But they're locked in. Every bridge, every artery leading out of the city is blocked. Well, how'd they make the break? I'll tell you how it happened. They jumped my husband. And then they took him hostage. Then they threw him off the truck. They were going 70 miles an hour and they threw him from the truck. Very sorry. I hope if you find those animals, you kill them. I want you to kill them. Come and sit down over here with us. Come on. Sit back. Right Steve. I thought you were going. Well, I decided to hang around. You know, sounds like a good story. Change of pace. Hey, Steve. That woman. I mean, I know she's upset, but she didn't mean that. She means it. Believe me, she does. <sighs> That's awful. How would those men do a thing like that? I mean, what reason would they have? There was always a reason. My job would be a lot simpler. Look, you don't need this. Go back to the apartment. I'll catch up with you later, okay? Okay. Oh, Mike, they found that truck abandoned near the cliff house. Steve. You gonna go? I'm going. Steve, take care. Paper says rain. Who can wait? Got a point. Can I borrow it? Sure, I'll leave it outside. Hi. Hi. Are you uh, open for business? We'll be in a minute. Well, I'm in a kind of a hurry. OK. Come on in. Do you have anything special in mind? Oh, we'll just kind of look around, OK? Sure. Hey, now that's a pretty time. What do you think? It's kind of too pretty. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you think it's that kind of joint? It could be. Yeah. Hey, listen. You running that kind of a store, pretty boy? Hey, anyway, well, you guys cut it out. Come on, we got to get out of here. You're so nervous. Relax. Hey. I wouldn't do that. You want the whole neighborhood in there? Put that away. Maybe you're right. Okay. Give me the tie. What? what Give me the tie! No, please, take anything you want, anything. I don't care what you take. Just get out! I won't say anything to anybody. I promise. I won't say a thing. I promise. That's right, pretty boy. You won't say anything to anybody. Lee. Look, there's the door bookkeeper. You want to go it alone? Go! Sorry I killed your weekend, buddy boy. Just shouldn't let those prisoners escape, man. So that was Connie, huh? Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot you hadn't met. Yeah, it was no time for introductions. What was she doing on there, research? I don't know, I was sort of wondering that myself. Did she ever do a crime story? No. Strictly gourmet tips. Gourmet, huh? Yeah. 
I think I read some of her stuff. As a matter of fact, I did one of her recipes. Uh, it was um, rice and ch chicken pilaf. Oh, yeah. Came out chow mein. <laughs> No, sir. They left the shotguns, took all the handguns. 38 specials, huh? They're going to use them to find two things. Wheels and clothes. That's right. Young fellow wants a ride. How about it, Esther? Sure. Looks a little bit like Johnny. <laughs> How far are you going, son? Salinas? Well, I'll take you as far as San Mateo. That'll be fine. Would you close the door, please? No, the door will be fine. Just drive, okay, Fop? Twenty-one strangled. It wasn't suicide. Somebody used a necktie and made a garret. Store owner? No, it's his folks' place. They're on vacation. He was just here for the summer. Who reported it? Phone call, anonymous. Male or female? Male. He said there were three guys in the store roughing the kid around. You sure he said three? Yeah. Any description? No, none. What about the guy that? Excuse me, one second. Be right back. Excuse me. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Keller. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. They were in here already. I said I didn't hear anything. Sorry. Well, you don't mind telling me your name, do you? Fenwick. Lewis Fenwick. Mr. Fenwick, is this your store? Thirteen years. You must have known the man that got killed. Yes. Terrible thing, what they did. I heard someone say there were three of them. You didn't see them? Mr. Fenwick, did you make the phone call? Now, look, there's nothing to be afraid of. These are escaped prisoners. They're running for their lives. Nothing to be afraid of. That's easy for you to say. Nobody's going to hurt you. Mr. Fenwick. Cops! You come in here with a gun, want people to talk, then you leave. What happens then when you're gone? Crazy people. They come back when I'm alone, like, don't... I didn't see anything. I need to know how they were dressed and which way they went. I think you can tell me that. I'm not responsible to nobody else. I'm just responsible to... Oh, me. No, that's too easy and you know it. If you decide to remember anything, that's my number. Turn right here. I start pulling over there. What for? We gotta let these nice folks out now, don't we? Come on, 
Lee. They didn't do anything. They don't know anything. Hey, look, they know where we are, right? They know what kind of car we got? Please, wait. Albert, let her go. I don't care what you do to me, but let her go. Hey, you know something? You really surprised me. Nice old couple like you belong together. In the graveyard! All right, this is the right forefinger of Lee Wilson. This is the right forefinger print found at the clothing store. They match. Now we got the left thumbprint of John Chickie Phelan. Left thumbprint from the store. What about the prints on the third guy? He was the only guy to see clear. There's a lot you won't find in those prints, Steve. Excuse me, Connie. This is Mike Stone, Connie Moore. Connie. Hello. Say, if you're checking up on him, I'm going to swear that he's never been out of my sight. Well, you're a good man to have around. May I ask uh, what you're doing here? Well, I have been doing a little digging. For what? Well, for you and possibly the city editor's desk. Now, you remember the riot at the prison last year? Yeah. All right, all three men you're looking for were very prominent in the riots. And one of them, Ben Vargas, was the spokesman for the group. Now, they demanded certain prison reforms, better food, better toilet facilities, and an end to brutality by certain prison guards. Okay, now, all these points were agreed upon. The riots ended, and nothing. No improvements, no reforms, nothing. Just a bunch of sanctimonious speeches. Now, that's what they got. So? So don't you see, that's what I was talking about, the reason, the missing element, motivation. Motivation. Now, how does motivation help us to find three killers? They are three human beings, Steve, who have been caged up like animals. Now, how can we expect them to really act differently? That is how we have treated them. Now, wait a minute, wait just a minute. I am all for prison reform, and I'm very sorry those promises were not kept. But I don't see how that gives anybody the right to escape and kill people. Hey, I'm not condoning here, here, here. violence. Well, I'm very glad to hear about you that. I'm very, very glad. glad. You should. Now, listen, you have got to remember why people do the things yeah, that they do. You cannot generalize. Oh, man, is that what you think? Yes, that's what I it looks generalize? Like. What do you mean, that's what you... Look, you're right what do you think that I'm doing what here? what it looks like. I'm trying to help you. I've you're not helping me. one bit. You can't... Hey, I'm just giving you... What is it? Well, it's uh, something that maybe Connie ought to see before she uh, puts that story on the city editor's desk. Well, you got it. Seen a lot of things, but never a shooting gallery like this. 38 caliber. Found these shells. 18 of them so far. Let's see. Any ID? No. Well, the pockets were stripped. Well, we better get a workup. Ballistics, fingerprints, x-rays, dental chart, the works. Facial photos, too, front and profile. Check up against passport and possible credit IDs. Right. Hey, are you all right? We shouldn't have brought you here. Come on. Is that why you're sorry? Because I'm here? Oh, Connie. No, wait a minute. You see this every day. Fine. But can you really just accept it like that? I mean, don't you feel anything? Is that what being a cop's all about? This isn't the time, Connie. Well, wait a second. You just said that man's basic instinct is to be a hunter, right? Right. Is that all that's on your mind right now? Just get back to the hunt. Never mind about the victim. They're just a piece of evidence now, something that leads you on the track of the animal that you're hunting. And never mind the fact that what you're hunting is a human being. Sick, maybe, but a human being, Steve. What does that cost you? I mean, what do you have to be to do that? I really don't understand. I just don't understand. I don't understand. All right, could you take the lady home? She's not feeling very well. Guess I had a bad idea. Okay, huh? okay. Anything else? No, no. no. What do you think? 
should be all right. I'm not talking about Connie. I'm talking about those two people back there. This is a real kill crazy spree, buddy boy. I've only seen a couple like it in my 27 years on the force. As far as I'm concerned, it's... Hey, look out! Sorry. You want me to drive? No, no. You're sure? Yeah. dumping ground this morning may be the latest victims of the fugitives, bringing to four the number of victims in their wake. A description of the three convicts released by police department officials is as follows. P. Wilson, age 32. Come on, man. They're just getting ready to talk about us. I got news for you, kid. You're not a celebrity. You're a target. Hey. Hey, how about that house over there, Lee? You see the bike? Now, you think it got there by itself? Over there. Empty garage. Yeah. We'll park around the corner. Lee Wilson has a sister in Vegas and a brother in Lansing, Michigan. All right, ask the local police for help on both of these. John Chicky Phelan, no known relatives, but a lot of jobs in San Francisco. Pin boy, locker room attendant, concessionaire, San Francisco Zoo, half a dozen of them. Joel, hit the paper on these, will you? See if you can find out anybody who knows where he's holed up. But well, what about, uh, Vargas? What about him? That's my phone. We'll be right back. Keller? Ben Vargas, former bookkeeper. Northwest Lumber Supply Limited with a Margarita Alvarez. Avenida Del Mar, Tijuana, for eight months after embezzling funds. Okay, give it to me. Bill, call the Mexican authorities. Find out what you can about this, will you? Do you want her watched? Well, if they find the girl, have them keep a lookout for Vargas, will you? Okay. Settled for a second degree. Disappointed in that? Or are you disappointed because it wasn't a call from Connie? I think I'll go down the record and see if they got anything on that old couple. Somebody's having a party. Check it out upstairs. Rip out the phones. If you see any guns, bring them down. Show the radio gear. A cop's house? They got him in cars, not at home. Listen. Okay. 
time is it? A little after two. Oh, Lord. Where's my key? Where's my key? There it is. Hurry up. These things are falling. Oh, God. There we go. Okay, you get the key, huh? I'll get it afterwards. Oh. Honey, can you get this ice cream into the freezer? I want to call Tane and see if she's got a date Sure, honey. Only eight vanilla. I thought we were getting a dozen of each. Get over there. Or the mantle. Now put your hands on it. Do it as she gets it. she now? She's spending the night with her grandmother. We wanted to get it set up without her knowing. Fifty-two bucks. You got any more money in the house? Uh, no, just that. Nothing upstairs? No box of dimes, quarter? Jewelry? Jewelry? You must have some jewelry. Nice looking mama like you. I bet you look like a million bucks when you're all decked out. Come on, Mama. Show me where you keep it. I'll get it. Hey! Stay out of it! Come on, Mama. Show me where you keep it. You're looking good. Relax. Hey, Ben. I would tell you about the little honey I took, uh... In the tool shed at the zoo? It was right next to the giraffe cages. Shut up! Hill, no, come here! Hey, nice setup you got. I was a sparks myself in the Navy. I ran a radio room on a tin can off South Korea. And you listen. And you listen good. Those guys are crazy. Hospital crazy, you know what I mean? They just killed four people, mister. Just play it straight, and you and your woman will be lucky to get out alive. Start anything, you'll both be dead. I think we ought to put three more units here on the south side. It's an awful large area to cover. I got you. Listen, I got a positive ID on that old couple, Mr. and Mrs. Albert Lockwood, 210 Sutter Street, San Mateo. Play this on DMV. Find out the kind of car they own and the license number. I beg your pardon. Oh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Fenwick, right? I heard on the radio about that couple at the auto graveyard. It's my fault. I should have told you I did see those men. I saw what they were wearing. Bill. This is Inspector Tanner. He'll take the information. You've got to get him. Yes, sir. Before they kill anybody else, you've got to. Looks like you finally got to him after all. Just a little late for the victims, that's all. Oh, he's a victim too, buddy boy. Maybe the worst kind. He's going to have to live with it for the rest of his life. Attention all units. North Point and the Embarcadero is a 1032. Mistaken identity. Info from Central 4. Uh, Central 4 radio. Central 4. That's uh, 4 for one, and 6 for one. I'll kill you, Harry! I'll kill you! Go! You want some phone? And you shut your mouth. Hello? Hello, Betty. This is Jane. Good news. I got a sitter for the baby today after all. So I'll bring Sharon over for the party at 3 o'clock. Okay? Okay. Anything I can bring? No. Okay, gotta run. See you at three. Bye. Hey, you're cute. You know that? You're real... You're really cute. Now, the party was supposed to be tomorrow. Now, what were you thinking? The people will come in, they'll see us, they'll call the cops. I want us to call them. They'll be here soon enough by themselves. 
You hear the radio? Cops got a description out on the old man's car. It's bound to be spotted. We gotta move. Lee, the camper's parked outside. We can take it. That's a good idea. I'll take you as insurance. Now, you try to follow. Or call the cops. And she's dead. Hey, that was a very good hit. Ben, give me the key. stake out on that Alvarez woman. Good. Oh, Mike, this is Mr. Thompson. I think you'd better talk to him. He says that... They've got my wife. They... Now, who's got your wife? Three men with guns. They broke into our house. They attacked her, took her away in our car. They... What kind of car? A camper, red. I didn't know if I should call her or not. They could kill her. License number? Uh, six... Six, four, four, three, eight, N. All right, Bill, you want to put that on the horn? Don't say I told you. Please, they'll kill her. I had to trust you. Put that they on can't the radio out. only. No what? media yet. Oh, uh, take Mr. Thompson into my room where it's quiet, Mr. Thompson. And you tell him everything that happened. Annie? I guess Steve's pretty busy, huh? Yeah, very. Well, I thought we should, uh, have a talk. Uh, I guess there's not much point in that either. Mike, would you give these to Steve for me? I won't be needing. Thanks. Connie. You see that man in there with Steve? Yes. Well, his wife is with those three men that you're so concerned about. She's already been attacked by them, and now they're holding her as hostage. Mike, I don't need any more of your shock treatments. Oh, now, wait a minute. I, I didn't ask you to come along just to shock you. Oh. No. I happen to know how Steve feels about you, and I just wanted you to see exactly what he has to deal with before, well, before you press that argument with him any further. That's all. All right. I've seen what he does and how he does it. No, you didn't. You didn't see anything. How would you want him to do his job? Oh, he's a professional. He can't work with tears in his eyes when he's looking at a corpse. He can't carry the guilty conscience of the world on his shoulders when he's running after a killer, can he? Mike, I think this is strictly between Steve and me. Not when other people's lives depend on it. And they depend on it as long as he's carrying that badge. Connie, you take him or leave him. But don't put a monkey wrench in his head. Don't make him less than he is. And don't get him killed. Hey, what? You put any gas in the thing? I was gonna get some today. Hey, station on the next corner. Hello? 
Hurry, fill it up. Regular. Hey, where are you going? There's one in the back. There's a lady in the back. You're burning oil. You're down about a quart. Okay, just hurry it up. Kenny? What's up, Kenny? Don't look now, but you see the guys in the camper? Mm -hmm. Well, they fit the cons we heard about on the radio. I said, don't look. One's in the men's room. The other's probably in back. Tell the other guys and call the cops. Listen, call the cops. The ex-cons you heard about on the radio, they're here in the camper. Okay, okay, that's enough. How much? Hey, mister, I can't rush it. I said, how much? Okay. Come on, move it! Be eight dollars and 29 cents. Here, keep the change. I'll just blow the hood. Hey, what's going on up there? Benny went into the bathroom. He's washing his 12 hands. He gives me a pain right inside my head. Hey, what's going on here? Just come out of there, mister. Come on now, step back, all of you. Step back, get back, way back, way back. Vargas, Vargas, where'd they go? Don't hit me. Nobody's gonna hurt you anymore. Now listen, they left you here. Can you hear me? They left you here. You don't owe them anything. Vargas, don't pass out on me, Vargas. Where'd they go? Uh, zoo. Uh, zoo. Zoo. Let's get an ambulance. They may still have woman hostage. Inspectors 8 1 on scene. Ferrari 13. 13. Ferrari 1032. Armstrong 1030. I don't want the CWB. 13 10 4, thank you. Larry, uh, Doug Thompson. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, listen, Larry, I'm taking my family camping up in Mendocino later today. I wonder. Well, you mentioned once you'd let me take that target pistol of yours out sometime and give it a try. Would it be all right if I picked it up now? Harry, take a detail to the south fence. Where's Tanner? To the aviary. We'll have him go around the west. Tell him to watch out for kids. All right, Bill, this is Steve. Move over with Art to the west side, will you? But look out for the kids. You got that? Check, Steve. All right, take another man, will you? Right straight through. Mike. Yeah. Thompson. Maybe he knows something he didn't tell us.
Oh, she's in there. How do you know that? Something one of them said, I remember. Let me go. Well, something you forgot, too, because I told you we get your wife back if you did it our way. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, come on. All right, this is Keller. There's a tool shed at the southeast corner up behind the giraffes. All units converge. Turn that prison guard loose. All units leave the area. Sirens on. Except inspectors 35. Give me a sharpshooter. Bill, bring in your best sharpshooter. He's gonna die. All over, Mr. Thompson. It's all over. For you, him, and your family. Unless you pull that trigger. Then you go where he's going, and your wife, she tries to tell your daughter why. Is that what you want? God, don't! Please! I, I can live with it if you can. But if you can't... If I'm all alone... I don't know. <laughs> Somebody asked me why. You want to 
to tell me? Yeah. Sure. All right, now get him out of here. Really makes you wonder, doesn't it? The time to ask was a long time ago. Why, you think he might have turned out different? Like you said, you wonder. But you never know. to feel something now? Like what? I'm tired. Oh, no. I've got enough of that feeling for both of us. Uh-uh. Look who's there. Yeah. Oh, say, I forgot. Yeah, she couldn't get in. Did you talk to her? Yeah, we had a few words. You had a few words. Lieutenant, you mind giving me all the information before Inspectors I... Inspectors 8 one Inspectors 8 one We have a possible homicide at 917 Bay Street. Will you respond? No, no, she's not going to believe this. Well, she's not going to hear about it. Oh, come on, there's no way I can get well, out of here. Wait a minute. I'm the lieutenant, right? Right. Why did I want to become lieutenant? So I could give the orders, right? Right. So please... Let me start this case on my own, will you, please? And another thing. You got a bottle of wine in the fridge? Yeah. Take it out and put the telephone in there. That way, if I call, I can always say nobody answered. <laughs> Inspectors 8-1 to headquarters. On that 917 Bay Street call, we'll respond. <laughs> Lovely surprise. Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Kitty Wynn, Nan Martin, Joel Fabiani, John McLeam, Patricia Smith. Tonight's episode, Most Feared in the Jungle.
right now, Barbara. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Oh, nurse. Apply more pressure. I can see the vertex. It's a normal presentation. Can I, can I help you, miss? I want my baby. What? Yeah. I, ha I haven't seen the baby. you about your baby at the hospital. I'm terribly sorry. Sorry? Your baby is dead, dear. Stillborn. No. No, I saw my baby alive. I'm sure you think you did. In cases like this, the imagination often plays tricks. The doctor, he'll know. Where is he? Now, Barbara, don't torture yourself this way. It won't do any good. Just try to accept what's happened. I want to talk to the doctor. All right. All right, dear. If that'll make you feel better, you just wait here. Please, go back to your rooms. Barbara? Oh, I thought you were going to Arizona to find Pete. I had a girl, Michelle. I'm sorry, Barbara. Just now, she walked in and asked for the baby. I know I told her that, but she won't believe me. She keeps asking for the doctor. I, I'm, I'm afraid for the other girls. But try to keep her calm until I get there. And whatever you do, don't give her the doctor's name. And make sure she doesn't find it. All right. Please hurry. What's that? Give it to me. No, Barbara. It's not. Let get me! You need to let me alone!
drive? Yeah. Okay. Connie or the body? What? When you get so down, you want me to get behind the wheel. It's got to be either Connie or the body. None of my business. That's right. So why don't you tell me anyway? Huh. You really want to live vicariously, don't you? Look, I find out what that means. You could be in big trouble, buddy boy. Come on. Come on, tell me. You broke it off, right? Yeah. Couldn't handle the cop's routine. I like to think she couldn't handle the cop. And which one? Connie. Good. Good? What are you talking about, good? That leaves the body. Oh, no, you haven't been keeping up, my friend. The body left last month for Chicago. She's gone. There goes our love life. Repeating for Inspectors 8-1. Central 1 has a homicide, 554 Clayton. Will you respond? 81, we'll respond. You got the crime lab on the way? Check Inspectors 8-1. Crime lab notified. On the way. 81, 10-4. Hiya, Steve. What have you got, Doc? A female Caucasian, middle-aged, probable cause of death, cranial trauma, parietal region. Looks like she got slugged in a fight. Get a make on her? One of your boys did. Gloria Davenport, age 50, 939 Ellis Street. She worked here as a supervisor. What's here? Some kind of a shelter for girls. Anybody see who was fighting with her? Yeah, one girl. Miss Rayfield? Miss Rayfield? Miss Rayfield? I'm Lieutenant Stone, and this is Inspector Keller. Hi. Hi. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Come on in. That pink blanket. What have you got there, a girl? <laughs> Michelle. Can I take a peek? Sure. Oh, she's pretty. Michelle, you're beautiful, you know that? I've got a genie, but she's in college. <laughs> you gonna stay on here a bit longer? Well, I was. I don't know now. I wouldn't worry about it. Are you sure you didn't see anyone around here regularly? Well, there was one man. Who was that? Oh, uh, I don't know his name. I didn't like him very much. None of us did, really, but... Well, he's the one that told me about Mrs. Davenport. <laughs> Was he the one that was here with her when it happened? No, it, it wasn't him. Well, who was it then? Somebody you know? One of the other girls, maybe? I, I don't want to get her in trouble. If she's not in trouble, you won't get her in trouble. But if she is, there's nothing you can do about it. Barbara Talmadge. What do you think they were fighting about? She asked for her baby. Her baby? Well, she went to the hospital last week, and Mrs. Davenport said that her baby was dead, stillborn. And then she told us that Barbara wouldn't be coming back here anymore, that she was going to Arizona to find her old man again, and then Barbara came back today. And uh, she acted funny, you know, like, uh, like she didn't even know about the baby or something. And then, like, she didn't believe it. And then... She asked for the name of the doctor. She get it? Well, I think that's what they were fighting about, because I heard the noise, and then Barbara came running out and pushed right past me and into the street, and then I found Mrs. Davenport. Do you know where Barbara is living now? Mm, well, I know her mother teaches at the USF. Maybe she went back with her. About the doctor, uh, do you have his name? Well, Dr. Joe takes care of us here. Dr. Joe. That's what everyone calls him. I don't even know his last name. I think it begins with an H. A what? I found his address book on the floor. The H's are missing. Maybe that's what they're hassling about. Oh, that's just great, Sherlock. That narrows it down to about, oh, I'd say, uh, 300 doctors. Okay. Police department. 
Unlimited calls, remember? Maybe you'll find it the first 200. I'll go out to the university and check on this uh, Barbara's mother. You got the keys? You said the name was Talmadge? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Unlimited calls, huh? Oh, uh, just a couple more questions. This man, can you describe him for me? she was pregnant, there were no moral lectures, no tears, no angry scenes. I even gave her the money to have an abortion, made all the arrangements for her. So naturally, she decided to have the baby. It's as if she has some, some need to give me pain. I don't think that's the reason. What else? Maybe she just wanted to have the baby. Do you ever think of that? There's something you ought to know, Inspector. Barbara's choices aren't always rational this is not her first mental breakdown she's been under psychiatric care and the last time she tried to commit suicide it looks now as if her hostility is directed in another way i believe the young lady is next thank you sit down please I'm looking for Dr. Highland. I'm Dr. Highland. Oh, no. It can't be. Well, he's older than you. He delivered my baby. You've got the wrong Dr. Highland. No, no. I had his number. I phoned, but it was his home, and they, they wouldn't tell me where he was. So I looked in the phone book, 50 Fulton Street. Right address. Wrong doctor. I'm sorry. doctor well well yes but he's been retired for years uh, no he delivered my baby i'm afraid that's quite impossible where is he now look young lady i, I... said where is he Dr. Halbert, this is Inspector Graves with the Homicide Bureau. You have a patient named Barbara Talmadge. You never heard of a Barbara Talmadge? Thank you very much. Well, tell Dr. Haxton that I called, will you? Yes, I'd appreciate it. That was just a Jim Dandy idea. I'm on that had. phone already. You bet you are. Start at the bottom of this page and work up. Right. What about the mother? I found her. And? And Barbara's not with her? I don't blame her. Nice lady, huh? Salt of the earth. And if she'd call it sodium chloride and give you a full analytic report. But tears for her daughter, none. Well, some people cry and some don't. Should see my genie sometimes at the movies. Two packs of tissue. But you're not ashamed of her, Mike. And her mother is? The daughter had a nervous breakdown once, right? You hear her mother talk with some kind of personal slap in the face. Mr. Shooter, Shooter, can I speak to the doctor? A shooting at 50 Fulton Street. Dr. Joseph Hyland. Begins with an H. Anything else, could you cancel that call? Dr. Highland, Lieutenant Stone, Inspector Keller. What happened here? A woman, a crazy woman, pulled a gun and shot me. Do you know who she was? I never saw her before. Any idea why she shot you? None whatever. She was obviously psychotic. She kept talking about a non-existent baby. Um, I know her name. 
Wait a minute, I've got it here somewhere. It's probably phony anyway. Holmes and... Uh, oh, no, here it is. Talmadge, Barbara Talmadge. Where did she get a gun? How many times a month do we have to ask that? All right, get out on all points, bulletin on her. Armed and dangerous. Right. Doctor, can I have a full description of her? Anything you can tell me? Excuse me, doctor. If you never saw the lady before, how do you know the baby was non-existent? Well, I, uh... I, I, it was an assumption, of course. I, I do know it's a rather common psychotic symptom. The creation of a fantasy child in place of the one the patient never had. Thank you. Are you positive you never saw this girl before? Never. Doctor? Oh, Dora. Any messages? Well, yes, sir. A young woman who wouldn't leave her name. And then your son called a couple of times. He said that it was very important and that you should... Well, that might be him now. No, I'll, I'll get it, Dora. Yes? It's me, Doc. That Talmadge girl has got your address. Oh, dear. How? Never mind how. Just get away from that house. All right. I'm going out again, Dora. Emergency. Well, is there a number where you can be reached? Well, Dr. Highland. to my baby. They didn't tell you? You're not going to lie to me, too, are you? Hey, Barbara, I wouldn't lie to you. you. You know that. Well, then, you take me to the hospital. There's no point in this. Now, doctor. Statewide. You know, I still can't figure out where she got that gun. We heard what the doctor says. She pulled it out of her purse. Maybe. Yeah, maybe he's lying. About a few things. She was only at one other place before this. It's as far as we know, yeah. The boarding house. Mrs. Davenport. Well, what would she be doing with a gun in a place like that? I'll leave that to you, buddy boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unlimited calls. Oh. You're making a bad mistake, Barbara. I want him back. It's only natural that you should. When things happen, get out of control. He isn't dead. In a way, that's true. Life that's never been lived could hardly be said to have died. My baby's alive. I remember him. Peter? Ronald Talmadge, that's the name I picked out for him. Except when I saw him, I said to myself, hey, little kid, you don't look like Peter Ronald. Now, I wouldn't have remembered that if it didn't happen. Childbirth was extremely difficult. We had to give you medication. Drugs do funny things to the mind. They play tricks.
did that on purpose. If you tell him anything, I'll kill you. Jerry. I'm a doctor. I'm on my way to the hospital. No ambulance for your plates? <laughs> You're on my other car. This one's for personal use. May I see some identification, please? I, I don't have any. No driver's license? No. Uh, no registration? Nothing. He is a doctor. I'll vouch for him. We're in a hurry. Are you sick, lady? No, it's my baby. He's in the hospital. I'll tell you what. I'll escort you to the hospital and then check you out with the staff. But you're still going to get a summons, Doc. Well, what hospital? Now, wait a minute. Uh, my bag's in the back. I think I've got my papers there. He's wounded. I said I... drive. The old man tried to grab her. She must have had the gun in her purse, but I never saw it. I think it was our girl, Jack. It had to be. I remembered that APB as soon as the slug slammed into my shoulder, but I blacked out before I could do anything about it. Just a minute. Jack, do you happen to know which way they went? The hospital, they said. Which hospital? I don't know. They were headed east. Did you get the license number? Yeah. California 175 PCE. Barbara, what are you doing here? Miss Evans, Barbara believes that her child is still alive. You showed him to me. Oh, Barbara, you were given Verithi and it made you hallucinate. <gasps> You're lying. Why would I do that? I mean, we're your friends. We wanted the baby to live. Someday we'll know all about childbirth, but right now we can only try. <gasps> Hallucination. It wouldn't seem so real. Look, your entire perception was distorted. Sensory images began to appear. I remember him. Now, look, Barbara, you have to believe... Stop it. I want my baby. What did you do with him? All right. Both of you get into that closet. Barbara. No, but no, Miss Evans, be careful. She will use it. In the closet. Cervix is almost fully dilated, Doctor. Very well. Let's proceed. Take a deep breath and hold it. Oh, nurse. A lot more pressure. Let's see the dirtiness. Baby.
Yes, I understand. Thank you very much. Steve, the plates belong to a Dr. Highland. What? Dr. Highland, age 71. That was his son we met. Well, what about the hospital? I don't know. Dead end. He's supposed to be in retirement. He's not at home. Well, I got one for you. You were right about the Davenport lady. She was licensed to carry a gun. What authority? She used to work for a private detective agency, some guy named Matthew Starr. Well, get his address. We'll pay 667 him. 667 Mission. <laughs> Star. Yeah? Police department. Come on in. Nice. Your end pays much better than the city. Ups and downs. Do you have a woman named Davenport working for you, Mr. Starr? Gloria Davenport? Yeah. Well, she used to. Not anymore. We understand that she was licensed to carry a gun. That's right. Well, anybody who works with me is. We get involved with some weird ones from time to time. You never know. Yeah, well, did she take the gun with her when she left? Not that I know of. You'd certainly know if she did. That's right. How many registered pieces do you have, Mr. Starr? A two. Firearms license board says three. Uh, three, that's right. Yes. I uh, never carry the 25 caliber. I kind of forget about it. Can we see them? Sure. That's one. Two. Third. It must be in the other room. Thanks. that third gun, drop it. If that lady took it with her, you're in deep water. Here's the phone. Call your lawyer. I don't need a lawyer. I didn't do anything. Do you always go out through the window? That's not a crime. Withholding information on a felony is... What felony? Let's start with kidnapping. Are you crazy? Well, somebody is, and they think they can take that girl's baby. Now, what has that got to do with me? What's Gloria Davenport got to do with you? 
I told you, she used to work for me. Used to? She still had your gun, Star. Come on. Come on, the lady was front for you. Now, come on. That's right. A home for unwed mothers. Now, that's a funny business for you to be in. All right, let's see how it works, all right? Girl comes to town to have an abortion. You spot her someplace, health clinic lobby, maybe? You and that Davenport woman. A nice motherly type. You talk the girl into having her baby, telling her it's a beautiful experience and all that sort of stuff. Expenses paid for by you. But the baby dies in childbirth. At least that's what you tell the mother. She cries her eyes out all the way home on a bus. Half stone. But Barbara, Barbara, she came down kind of fast, didn't she? she? She figured out what happened and she went after the baby. Running all over town like some kind of crazy animal. And you made her that way, Mr. Starr. Yeah. You stole that girl's baby. You guys are crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. And you don't either. Did you really think you could play God and get away with it forever? I've got to make that call now. Well, why don't you just sit there for a second or two? You might save us a dime. How did you pick the ones that you let live and the ones that you stole? How did you know which ones were going to give you a profit and which ones weren't? Come on, what was it? Looks, family tree, education. Come on now, what was it? I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, okay, against the law, but not wrong. Babies. You know, some people try all their lives to have them. All of their lives. Then they make up their minds to adopt. Some skinny broad with a PhD breaks the news to them that they can't. You know why? Because maybe they got an illness. Oh, nothing contagious, just something like uh, diabetes, say. Or maybe they uh, haven't been married long enough. Or maybe they've got one foot over the line. The line is 55, mister. And it's a long wait if you want a healthy kid, sometimes three to four years. Think about it. Say you're almost there. You've got a wife who's younger, and she wants to be a mother, but one of you is sterile. What do you do? Hmm? You could come to us, and we'd get you a kid. A kid that wouldn't even be living if it weren't for us. Now, is that wrong? What about the doctors, the old man and his son? How did you hook up with them? No, oh, just the old man. His son doesn't know anything. Oh, and if you know about Joe Sr., you know he's no quack butcher. Those, those girls had good care. We know the doctor lost his license 15 years ago for performing abortions. Well, that's, that's what that says. I say he was 15 years ahead of the times. And what about now? Huh? He's helping kids grow up in a home instead of getting stuffed into a back pack and lugged around the country without a roof half the time, without the right kind of food. Is that what you're offering? Social services? Is that it, Mr. Starr? Oh, Social no, services? No, How much you get for those babies? How much you get for ripping them off? Depends. How much? Two, maybe three thousand. Maybe double? Well, I've got expenses. You got dividends today, too. Two men shot and a woman killed. Now, you're gonna help us find this girl, Barbara. Or we are gonna nail you to the wall as an accessory to murder. Okay, okay. Uh, her baby went to a family named uh, Hunt, Arthur Hunt in Daly City. Wait a minute, she got hold of that doctor, he probably gave her the address. This is Stone. I want a number for a Arthur Hunt, Daly City. No, 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 I'll hang on. This is an emergency. Your bottle's almost ready. Honey? Uh, just a minute, Pam. Come on out in the kitchen when you're through. I'll be right with you. Excuse me. You got... No, 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 that's not the one. 
What I want is a W-4 form. That's the employer's withholding from the Rockwin Metal Company. Have you got that? Still busy. Get the operator bust in on it. Okay, Bob. Yes? I got him. Uh, Mr. Arthur Hunt? That's me. This is Inspector Keller at the San Francisco Police Department. And I'm calling you about your baby. What baby? Look, Mr. Hunt, we know the whole story, but that's not important now. The main thing is that the real mother may know where you live. Now, I'm sorry to have to alarm you, but she is armed and possibly irrational. So I suggest the best thing is to take your wife and baby out of the house, go to the home of a relative, friend, anybody nearby, and call us at the number I'm about to give you, all right? Yes, but how do I... Mr. Hunt, if you have any doubt about the authenticity of this call, I suggest... No, no, I believe you. What's the number? What motivates any of the policy changes, Fred? Excuse Why, me. That's the whole point. Uh, Professor Talmadge? Yes. Would you come with me, please? It's about your daughter. Have they found her? I believe so. They want you to make a positive ID. Oh, excuse me, Fred. Please. Get the suitcase out of the closet. Sir. I want my baby back. Baby? What baby? I said I want my baby back. I'd like to help you, Miss Pachum. You are making a mistake. We have no baby here. I'm all ready, honey. We can fill up with gas at the end. Yeah. Oh, what is it? This young lady seems to think we have her baby. Oh, we have no children here. No. I'll give you one minute to bring him out, or I'll shoot your husband. All right, I'll do it. Look, I... Get back. Let me tell you, you're making a mistake. I said, get back. I'm not going to give him to you. You're not going to get him. He's mine. He's not yours. You didn't want him. I waited for him to be born. I, I waited for him, and I love him. And you didn't want him. He's my baby more than yours. That's not true. I did want him. They took him away from me. Now I, I've come to get him back. Barbara. Go away and get out of here. Put it down. Come here with us, Barbara. This can all be straightened out. It's already straightened out. I found my baby. That's right, Barbara, you have. But it's going to hurt your baby if you don't put it away. Not until she gives him back to me. Barbara. I've come to help you, dear. You need rest. Treatment. You're not being reasonable. What is your idea of reasonable, Mother? Pill in the morning? Sex at night? Abortion at the end of a careless month? That's not my idea of reason. 
I know what it is to have life inside of me, growing through me. You never taught me that. You never taught me that life and love are the same. You didn't want me to have my baby. Nobody does. Nobody. I want you to have your baby. Robert, my name is Stephen, and I want you to have your baby. I know what you're saying. And in some ways, you and I are looking for the same things. Someone hasn't told you where to find it, have they? You want to hold on to something. Something real. And now you found it. You found your baby. Say anything now, wouldn't you? It's just what I feel. Now, you don't need that, do you? You carry one. But wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to? the baby in the car, Mr. Hunt. be going in soon. I believe I see how the judge is thinking. Barbara is going to the state mental hospital for observation and treatment. And until she gets out, they'll let you take care of the baby. Good. No, no, not so good. Not to adopt. Just to take care of the baby. For how long? I think that's going to depend upon Barbara.
of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production, starring Carl Malden, also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Jeffrey Duell, Darlene Carr, Pine Daly, William Smith. Special guest star, William Watson. Tonight's episode, Commitment. Georgie, where's your smile? Leave it down at headquarters? Hey, man. Come on, I mean, like, what's going on? You tell us, cop. Well, what are you talking about, cop? Me? Hey, you, you crazy? Maybe not even as dumb as you thought we were. Uh, you guys are putting me on. Sure we are. Pretty good moves, too, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, he looks like he's got it all together, but that, uh, that other guy sure isn't any Danny Ortega. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of patience. That isn't all about a right hand. I haven't seen his right yet. Don't worry about the right. You'll see the right. Uh, what, one of you guys, Inspector Keller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you want it on the phone. Urgent. Follow me. Why me and not you? Because I probably don't know the lady. Watch it, watch it. I may be light, but I'm slow. <laughs> with you a minute? Yeah, I mind. No questions? Not curious? Nothing? What do you want, Lyman? Now, that's more like it. That's better. That's like the old Mike Stone we all know and love. I want to tell you about this traveling lady salesman. sitting on his lap. He was here? Uh-huh. What did he want? I don't know. Danced a little. Told me if I didn't look out, he'd have my bad, smiling all the while. <laughs> and he told me a joke that wasn't funny, got up and left. Uh, hey. Are you sure you don't want to come in for a couple no, of minutes? No, I don't think so. The pot on for no, I'm beating my pretty, but thank you for the offer. Okay, see you in the morning. Manana.
coffee. Oh, fine, just fine. The kiss of death. Huh? Fine, just fine. Every time you say fine, I know something's wrong. What's the matter with it? Two weeks ago? Scrubbed the pot, didn't you? Well, yeah, it didn't look like anybody cleaned it since the last time I've been home. It's because nobody had. Scrubbing a coffee pot destroys its character. The first thing I'm going to do when I get back to school is find a chem major who'll test that theory and punch a hole in it. Well, it won't help the coffee any. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Mike Stone. Are you still looking to find Neil Baxter? Yeah, who is this? <laughs> I got something you want, and I need something from you. What do you got? Baxter. You want a deal? Depends on what you want. Well, meet me. We'll talk. When? Ten minutes. I'll be at the east end of Pier 36. What was it, Mike? Nothing, sweetheart. I, I gotta go down and see someone. Now? Well, I'm afraid so. Don't wait up for me. I might have to go downtown afterwards. And leave the coffee on, will you? Maybe it'll develop a little character that way. Let me get some sleep. I'll uh, see you at breakfast. Oh, and lock the door. I got my key. My. Yeah. Officer Gino Carlino, working undercover for the Narcotics Division. Under the name George Kaysen? Correct. Okay, you were his department contact. Well, what was he working on specifically? Al Lyman. Sooner or later, everybody in Narco ends up working on Al Lyman. Okay, you want to take me through it? Just give me a quick sketch. Okay. Gino started working on that case about, uh, oh, I'd say a year and a half ago. He joined a bike club we knew had some users. Started making buys. And he turned the pusher. He worked his way up to the next run. He turned that guy, too. His next contact, he thought, would be Al Lyman up until last night. Come in. Oh, Lieutenant. Glenn Decker. Hello. You know Miltadini from Narco? Yeah. No, we just met about 11 years ago. I know. I'm sorry about your boy. I didn't know he was with us until they told me an emergency. Yeah, well... Wherever it was, we'll nail him. How about the shot to the head? Are you okay? Not too hard, not too light. I was hit by an expert. Well, lucky again, huh? <laughs> Sit down, Lieutenant. Yeah, thanks. You understand Captain Martin has asked for a full investigation? Yeah, I understand that. I thought maybe he'd take on the whole show himself. <laughs> you know him. He likes to have somebody to yell at. All right. 
Your report says you didn't know Carlina was there last night. I didn't see him until I came to. You got a phone call from someone who didn't identify himself? That's right. Any idea who it was, Mike? Not by the voice. You never saw him? What I saw was a figure in the shadows. Then I got clobbered. When he phoned you, what did he say? He said he could give us Nate Baxter. Who's Baxter? Lyman's number one man. Right, Michael? That's right. About 12 years ago, a cop named Joe Morgan caught Lyman at a drop over in the Tenderloin. Word was that Lyman lost his cool and pulled the trigger himself. Twelve years. I just haven't been able to nail him. Nobody has. Are you saying uh, Baxter could? Well, if he was there, like they said, it makes him a witness. Yeah, but why would he turn on Lyman now? You know what he has. The guy took him out about two weeks ago, and he missed him. He's holed up somewhere. Nobody knows where. Except his ex-wife. His ex-wife? Yep. She called me right after it happened, wanted me to talk to him. Wanted him to save himself by giving us a lineman. Then she knows where he is. Mm-hmm. Only I lost her. No phone? Address? Nothing? No, nothing. I thought it was all dried up until I got that phone call last night. That's why I went out. Right. All right. I think that does it for now. Okay. Thank you. Take care of that, Mike. Right. Oh, Lieutenant, there is one more thing. Yeah, what's that? And I hate to even ask it, but, uh, but Officer Carlino was shot with a 38 caliber weapon. Yeah. Do you have any objection to my running a ballistics check on your revolver? Get off it, Decker. Who do you think you're talking to? 23 years on the force? Take it easy, relax. Hasn't been fired. Okay, we'll have a matchup on this in a few minutes. Right. Charlie. Steve. You Decker? That's right. Steve Keller. I work with Stone. Oh, sure. How are you? I'm all right. I'd like to know what's going on here, though. Just a routine ballistics check. What is routine about saying Mike might have shot another officer? Hey, I'm not saying anything, Keller. I'm asking. That's my job. Been with Stone long? Two years, yeah. Finish this up for me, Eddie, and get it to me quick. Hey, you know anything about Nate Baxter? From what Mike has told me, yes, I do. How about what went off between him and Lyman? He didn't tell me that. All right, this is all according to Baxter's ex-wife. Had something to do with a deal in Cleveland. Baxter's kid brother got chopped, and the word was Lyman set him up. So Baxter went after Lyman. Any way to verify all that? Not without Baxter, no. And this whole thing goes back 12 years for Stone, huh? 12 years, that's right. It's a long time. Never any way to make a collar? Well, if there was, I'm sure Mike would have found it. Back to Decker. Want to look at these? Uh, Stone's gotten the murder bullet. Would you like to see these in overlay? Please. What's your official evaluation, Charlie? They both came from the same guy. No question. Wait a minute. Just, just wait a minute. Mike was knocked out. Anybody could have taken his gun and killed Carlino with it. Like? Like the guy that hit him over the head. That's who, like? The same guy could have stood around, then cleaned it out, and then put it back in Stone's holster. What do you mean? I don't know what you're saying. I mean, the cylinder was full. The gun was clean. It looked like it hadn't been shot. Stone told me it hadn't. Look, I'm telling you, whatever's going down here... Are you telling me it's never happened before? Sure. One cop killing another? Sure, it's happened before, but the cop was not Mike Stone. Well, I hope you're right, Keller. I really do. I hope he's as clean as that gun was when he handed it to me. But right now, that's what we've got. So a bullet from my gun killed Carlino. 
All right, he got framed. What did the captain say? Stone. I know this is a stupid question, but I feel like cooking tonight. So if there's even the remotest chance you'll be home before 9 or 10, I'll gamble and make something super. That's fine, sweetheart, just fine. Mike, what is it? Nothing. Uh, I'll be home soon. You got grounded? That's where Carlino was found, shot at close range. How close? About three feet. According to the medical examiner, the angle of the bullet says he probably was already down when he took it. That X, that where Stone went down? Right. At least that's what he said. Oh, come on, Decker. Now, do you think Mike Stone is stupid? If he was gonna kill Carlino, he wouldn't use his own gun. No, not if he had a choice. What are you getting at? Motive. Why would a cop with a great record in the department like Mike Stone, kill another cop. Well, you sound to me like you've got the answer. All right, bright boy, let's have it. Well, I can think of a dozen, and so can you. But they all come down to one thing, don't they? Survival. Now, if a man gets desperate enough, gets too much pressure, he'll do anything to save himself. And that, that includes doing something dumb like using his own gun. Now, Carlina was killed when he was down. Stone took a blow to the head. That means they could have argued, fought. And then, because there was no other choice, Stone shot him. Now, you tell me that's not possible. I guess I just wanted to be talked out of. Out of what? Thinking Mike and Lyman are wired in some way. Hey, Dadini, you got something says they are? Listen! I think you better go downtown. I want to make a full statement. Okay, pal, you got it. 49 is plus three. Lots of luck to you. Hey, Gappy! Gappy! Oh, hey, Steve, I didn't see you. Relax, sweet. Whatever went down, I didn't see it. Go down, down. Hey, come on. You know I'm keeping clean. I'm staying very lucky. Listen, Gappy, I got a problem. Yeah, so I hear. Mike, is Yeah, what do you hear? in trouble with the department doesn't figure so what does so you'll be stopping by word is you're looking for somebody guy named baxter nate baxter you know him what sure sure it's hot stuff word is that they're offering five big ones for anyone who can finger him well i need him for mike Mike got me off this juice, you know that? I know, man, I know, he cares. So do I, so do I, all right? I'll ask around, if I get anything, I'll let you know. All right, Kathy, thank you. I wouldn't do it for anyone else. Hell, Mike, to hang in there. Right. Mike? Yeah? About a half a pound of salami cut thick for omelets. Okay, you've got it. Half a pound thick.
You saw them both at the boxing arena, right? Correct. Inspector Decker. This is Stone. Listen, do you have a tail on me? What? Give it to me straight, Decker. You got somebody on me. No, why? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> Talk to Mike Stone. Oh, I'm sorry, he's not here now. Well, you must be his daughter. You know he's in trouble, right? Who is this? Well, I'm a friend. Uh, listen, I can get him out of that trouble. I have evidence. Well, can he call you when he... No, I can't wait. Listen, now, maybe you can help. You meet me at the corner of Hyde and Jefferson, and I'll give it to you. But I... Just be here as soon as you can. <laughs> Stone? Yes? You're sure? Listen, give this to your father, and he'll understand. So hold on to it. to nail Mike Stone, he wouldn't just be grounded, he'd be in the slammer, and I'd be holding the key. Yeah? Well, I don't think you're gonna see anything looking to his face. Why don't you just talk to me? I worked with the guy for two years, and I'm telling you, he's not a killer. 
He's the most honest, loyal, trustworthy oh, man, guy you something else, you know, but that's right. Yeah, well, I've been doing this kind of work for five years now, and you're not the first guy I've heard sing that song about his partner. Oh, come on, will you? The whole thing's a frame, and you know it. The only thing I know for sure is that all the evidence I have so far says Mike Stone could be on Alabama's Like Lyman's what? Way. Like 12 years ago, a cop named Morgan was killed because he got in Lyman's way. So? So Stone headed the investigation. The case was never solved. That's one. Now, number two. Another cop named Carlino got too close to Lyman, and he was killed by a bullet from Stone's gun. So you're saying Lyman gave the order? Number three. Last night, Dedini was tailing Lyman, and he saw him talking to Stone. I know all about that one. But you don't know that when Dedini got home, he got a call from Carlino. Carlino said he thought he found a cop on Lyman's payroll. He wouldn't give him a name till he was sure, but he'd know that night. Now, two hours later, Carlino was dead. Now, you tell me, if it's all a frame, it's a damn tight one. What? Hey, you should have a question in. Hey, Keller, who's, who's she? This is Mike Starr. Now, what's going on? Back there. Paulie Rutherford. User. Pusher. One of Lyman's punks. They just picked him up. 10,000 in 10s and 20s. The envelope's got Mike's name on it, and she was there to pick it up. I'd like to find Lyman and tear him apart. That's what I'd like to do. I think you should do it. You wouldn't even have to report it. You just watch the late news. There it'll be in living color. I'm sorry, Mike. It wasn't your fault, sweetheart. Don't blame yourself. Another thing. How did Narco just happen to be watching that bank? A tip. A tip, huh? Nobody bothered to give a name, though, did they? And Paulie's downtown right now swearing he's given you a lot of other envelopes over the years. He's even willing to take the rap for it, Mike. I gotta give Lyman credit for one thing. He's doing a clean job on me. But you're innocent. I mean, they can't really believe you killed anyone. Decker does. You know, he's got you nailed five ways. He's even tied in a connection between the payoffs and the mortgage on this house. How's that? You paid it off in cash, $9,000, just two weeks after Morgan was murdered. He did that with his savings. No, he didn't. He... Decker checked with the bank, and at that time, you had something like uh, $700 in the account. I told him it came from your wife's insurance policy, like you said. My... Oh, well, it was so long ago, I guess I've forgotten. You didn't forget anything. I told you the money came from savings. That was a lie. I never lied to you before or after. And what Decker said before is true. I didn't save that. I couldn't on the salary I was making then. I had a little, and after your mother got sick, it all went. Pretty fast, too. Those hospitals can eat it up. After she was gone, there you were, asking questions. You were lonely, you were missing her. And I tried to do everything I could to fill in for your mother. She was the saver. Who could she save? Every nickel and dime she thought it was important to save. And I thought it would be a good lesson for you, too, so I lied to you about the house. At the time, I, I thought it was the right thing to do, but now I just think it's plain dumb. Not to me. You're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> Come on, I'll walk you to the car. Jeannie, thank you for the coffee. You liked it? Yeah, it was good. Had a lot of character. Oh, listen, I uh, checked in that car you chased. The plates were stolen. So what about Baxter? Any word? No, nothing yet, but I'm going back on the street now. I'll see you later. Yeah. I see uh, Decker's got a tail on me. No, 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 no. That, that's the good guys. Williams and Jackson, bought your little insurance myself. Anything happens now? I'll have half of the department as witness. The way Decker's going, that may not be enough. I'll call you later. 
Jesus, a big party or something, huh? Well, How many of you are around I here? Well, you can take kind of money. I'll call it. You believe him? Any reason why I shouldn't? I'd like to think there was, yeah. Why? I've known Mike Stone a long time, that's why. Abel knew Kane his whole life. Yeah, and love that brother. But in your case, I'll make an exception. He looked at me. I don't like this any more than you do, so let's just get it over with, huh? You call Mrs. Carlino? Oh, yeah. She's waiting for you. I'll take it. I'll take it. Homicide. I got a message for Keller. He's not here. So who is this? Look, if you have a message, leave it. Otherwise, call back. Okay, okay. Tell him it's from Cappy. You got that? Cappy, okay. Tell him I couldn't find the man, but the man's wife is at the old Greybriar Hotel, room 204. Is that it? Hello. Did you know him? No. No, I never met him. That's how he looked two years ago. Not like what you saw in the morgue. Mrs. Carlino, I'm, I'm very sorry about what happened. Gino didn't die last night. He stopped living when he took that lousy job. We both did. They promised me they'd shave him. I don't want him buried like that. He'll have a full dress ceremony. And he has the respect of every man on the force. No, I'm sorry. It's all right. Is there anyone I can get for you? Family or friends? Friends? Our friends gave us up a long time ago. They thought Gino lost his mind, that he was some kind of freak, a junkie, a pusher. Who wants to be around somebody like that? Just the losers he had to spend his time with. Did you ever meet any of them? Did he ever mention any names? Like Al Lyman, Nate Baxter? He said he couldn't talk about the work. He said he couldn't. What about other officers? Yeah, I know a few. A Lieutenant Stone? Mike Stone? Stone? No, I don't think so. Why? I'm just investigating all leads, that's all. You investigating a police officer? I'm just trying to find out who shot your husband, Mrs. Carlin. You think another cop killed Gino? Somebody that was, that was leading a normal life while Gino was running around like some kind of dirty, hairy animal? What anybody thinks isn't important. Now, all that matters is finding the truth. That's why it's important for you to try to remember now, anyone, anyone you might have met while he was working. Yeah, I met someone. A girl, a junkie. Gina brought her into the hospital last July. Hospital? Yeah, general hospital. I work as a nurse's aide on vacations. It was 4th of July. And he brought her in because she, she was sick. She was dying. And because he said that she was a friend of his. Well, can you remember her name? Pam. That's, that's all he called her. I hadn't seen him for two days, and he comes in with her. But it wasn't, it wasn't what I thought at first. It, it was just a friend. He wanted to help her. He didn't do anything wrong. And you haven't done anything wrong in telling me. Thank you. William. You see Mike? Yeah. How's he doing? He's okay. When did this come in? Oh, about a half an hour ago, maybe. The Dini took it. Pam Smith. She was a heroin user. Yes, thank you. Do you have an address on her? Josie, please take care of B14. Thank you. Yes, apparently it's changed. She was supposed to come back for a post-op, but the notice we sent came back in A. Can you have that card, pen, pencil, and stuff? Here you are. What was her condition? I never interviewed her. Once her condition was stabilized, she disappeared. Okay, thanks anyway. All right. Hey, Keller. Hey. Who's that? Baxter's ex-wife. I came with her in the ambulance. Where's your car? It's not back. 
What happened? Somebody got to her. She would have been dead if the super hadn't heard her scream. I got out through the window. Did she say who it was? He said he had a badge. Yeah. And he got where Baxter is out of her. Yeah, but she told me too on the way in. Then he's ahead of us. That's right. was a cop? Said he had a badge. Well, it wasn't Stone. Now, what makes you so sure of that all of a sudden? Because you've got him bottled and tagged by half the guys in Homicide. If he opened the window to sneeze, they'd know about it. Who do you think approved that surveillance team of yours? It's still my case, remember? You know, you're a tough guy to figure out. Yeah, so's this frame. But maybe when Mrs. Baxter comes to, she can give us a make on the guy we want. Okay, what leads we got now? None. Well, what about that, uh, that girl, Pam? The address she gave here is no good. Well, let's talk to Dadini. That's his beat. I have a doubt it's Pam Smith. Not so. Her name was Pam Greenfield. She was a junkie before she was a hooker, or vice versa. He told us about taking her to the hospital, too. Said she was an old friend from high school. He felt he had to help her. Tina was a good boy. Do you have an address on her? Yeah, I'm sure we do. If she's still there, 1630 Mariposa. 1630 Mariposa. Thank you, Milt. You bet. I'm busted, right? Pam Greenfield? Search. 50-50 split on anything you can find. No, no, we're here to talk to you about a guy named Gino Carlino. I don't know any Gino. Well, I think you do. Look, if you're just here to hassle me, you can... Gino's dead, Miss Greenfield, and we're trying to find the man who killed him. How should I know anything about that? Well, now, you sound like you don't even care. Why should I? Because he did. Now, if I understand it right, he got you to the hospital where you almost OD'd. Yeah? Well, you know so much about it. Why don't you tell me what that's worth? I should owe somebody for that? Are you kidding? Now, nobody's kidding anybody but you, baby, and we don't have time for it. Now, maybe you're right. Maybe your life's not worth eight cents. But somebody else's life is on the line here, and you can help save it with the truth. Now, what do you know that you're not telling us? Nothing. You're lying. Now, what is it? You knew he was dead. Now, do you know who killed him? Glenn, Glenn. She knows! Don't you? You know who killed him? Yes. Yes, I know. I did it. I sold him. He was my friend, maybe my only friend, and I sold him for a fix. For a stinking fix. Who'd you give him to? Come on, Pam, let it out. I knew he was a cop. He was always going to be a cop. We'd gone to school together. 
He was going to be a cop and I was going to be a lawyer. I guess we made it halfway there, huh? I didn't mean to do it. I was strung out. I couldn't make any money like that. He was all I had to sell. Just tell us who you sold him to. Mickey. Mickey who? Mickey Sims. I got it. Hello. Mike, you ever hear of a guy named Sims, Mickey Sims? Yeah. Works with Lyman. Why? All right, he killed Carlino. At least we got a witness who said he did. Now, you know where we can find him? Yeah, maybe. I busted him once. Lives in a high rental district on Pacific Heights. Someplace on Green Street, I think. Uh, listen, what about Baxter? We lost Mike. Lyman got him? Looks that way, yeah. We just missed. Sims again. Not unless he's carrying a badge. What did you say? That's right. Lyman does have a car. It looks that way. Maybe Sims can tell us who. I'll call you later. No, no, wait a minute. What about Mrs. Baxter? Is she dead, too? No, she's a general. She's beaten up pretty bad, though. Well, then she can tell us about the guy, can't she? Well, if she pulls through right now, it's 50-50. Talk to you later. Show him your identification. No, of course not. Dr. Holt, are you licensed to practice in this state? Oh, yes, of course I am. Look here, I, I don't know what's did, going uh, on did here. Did you just I make a house call in what? here? A house call. Did you make a house call in here? No, no, I was just uh, looking in on a friend. Can you show I us, please? Give me that stuff. No more. This stuff will make you higher than a kite, man. The doc said wait. The doc ain't got the pain I do. Now give it to me. Let's open a bottle, too, okay? Take a look. Hey, Doc. What's the matter? You forget something? Just take it easy. Against the wall. All right, all right, but take it easy. On that one. That's your time to backstory his will. No. No, I never shot anybody. That's his bag. I just drive. You were there. Yeah, yeah. But he pulled the trigger both times. Oh, you just smashed up the old lady. No, that was the cop. What cop? <laughs>
She's upstairs. Mike, what's going on? It's all over, Milt. She gave us a full description of the cop who beat her up. What are you talking about? I just got the word that Baxter Lloyd was down here. I keep That's when I put it together, when you got word. You took the message. You and Steve were the only ones who knew where she was. I didn't tell anyone about her, but you and Decker. Why? Why, Milt? Why you and Lyman? Why? Money. Money? Money. For Carlino? I gave up my right to choose a long time ago, Mike. Lyman calls the shots. Okay, get him out of here. Milt. Mike, I'm sorry. I really mean that. But you and I are going out of here together. You and me. You were going to waste my life before. Come on, go ahead. Waste it now. You made a lot of bad moves, Milt. Come on. But you got one good one left. Give me that gun. And tell me all you know about Lyman. As I always wanted Lyman, I never wanted him that bad. So how long had he been on the take? He said only about three years. He didn't have anything to do with that murder 12 years ago then? No. No, I guess we'll never close that case. But between that guy you busted and Milt's testimony, I guess we can close the book on Lyman. You know, maybe we ought to get inside and see that Greenfield chick. She thinks she sold Carlino and might want to hear that Lyman knew about him all along anyway. Yeah. I don't think it's going to help, though. She's always going to know what she did. Lieutenant? Mike. Mike. I think I owe you an apology. For what? Doing your job? You don't owe me anything, my friend. <laughs> no, sir. Not one solitary thing. Wait a minute. Somebody does owe me for a busted fender and a headlight. Listen, uh, you got to get this thing fixed. Drive with one light that's against the law. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I got friends in the department. <laughs> 